Hey, <laughs> g'day. Welcome to this video about Pike Maker 2 and the Microdot web server. On the next couple of videos, I'm planning on building a microcontroller based project to manage spam calls coming to my home telephone. It's a POTS plain old telephone line. It'll be a combination of do not disturb function and a smart spam blocker. I know that I'll be building this on a Raspberry Pi Pico W microcontroller and be using MicroPython as my programming language. This is where things got a bit complicated. Normally I would code in Visual Studio Code IDE and use PyMaker extension to interface this to my microcontroller. Uh, things have changed a bit since I was last working on MicroPython. Uh, PyCom, which is the company that was supporting the PyMaker 1 extension for Visual Studio Code, has been bought out and no longer seems to be supporting the original extension. Uh, fortunately, uh, Jacob Rosenberg from PyCom has updated and made a public version of PyMaker 2 available and links to that GitHub repository are down below in the description. How to use PyMaker 2 has changed quite a bit from the earlier version and is a little tricky to use. Uh, so in this video I go over setting up PyMaker 2 and how to use it. Uh, also for this demo uh, of PyMaker 2 I'll set up a MicroPython based web server on a Raspberry Pi Pico W and be using uh, the Microdot uh, web server for code for that. Then in uh, the following videos I'll use this Microdot web server in my plain old telephone spam guard uh, which I ended up calling uh, the pot guard project. So first you need a copy of Visual Studio Code on your machine. I won't go into the details, but this shows you where you go to get a copy of Visual Studio Code and the install is pretty easy, at least on Windows. After you've installed Visual Studio Code, when you open it, it should look something like this. Uh, so first thing we want to do is add the PyMaker extension. So we go to Extensions on the left-hand menu and type in PyMaker. And two versions show up here. There's a preview and the official one. I'm going to go with this one, the PyMaker uh, 2.22.5. So let's install that. And I guess I'm a bit worried how long this is going to stay around. So uh, I put a link down below on how you can find the actual extension file if you want to copy that down, save it away, and you can install from the extension file as well. So PyMaker is installed. We can tell that because the PyMaker icon is now on this left-hand menu. Okay, for this example, I'm going to create a new folder for Visual Studio Code to work out of. Uh, so let's do Open Folder. Go over to where I keep all my projects. Make a new folder. I'm going to call it Py. Make a demo looks good. And I'll select that folder. Okay, the folder's empty at the moment. So if I go down here and look at additional views, there's one for, oh, actually, here it is here Pie Maker. And I'm going to create a project. It's going to ask me what folder to create the project in, so I'll just go to that folder I just created. It's going to ask me to confirm. And I'm just going to create an empty project at the moment. And it's recognized that I've got a, in this case, a, a Raspberry Pi Pico W connected to serial port 8 on my machine. So that's nice, it automatically picked that up. And the project set up. At the moment the project's called Empty Project, so let me give a better name for that. Save that away. I'll go over here. And it's created a boot 
and a main pie for me. So let's just test this out. I'm going to put in print. So that should run when this runs on the device. So let's save all this. So I want to do almost everything from my Explorer view. So I'm going to drag the PyMaker demo project up into the Explorer view. Just reorganize things a bit. Okay, so just arrange the, the view when I use the Explorer view here. So that's good. I can see my open editors. The files that are in my project and then down here I got a project view and you see it's already opened up to my com 8 and recognize it as a Raspberry Pi on that that device so first thing I want to do is to upload the files for my Pi Maker demo and this is what Pi Maker does well as I'll sync that up to the device and it's uploaded them all and now I want to run that on the device so I can say run on device. It's going to confirm what device I'm using. And it ran it, but I didn't see anything. So let me go down here, create a terminal. So this is just a REPL terminal. So I can do things like And it ran the the code, but I can also run it from here now. I make a run on device. Then you see it ran just shows it in my serial terminal here. Uh, one thing you can do to stop it uh, always asking what device you want to run it on is to go to sorry, go to extensions, go to PyMaker, go to the options. Go to extension settings and down here there's an option for this one here by default it's on where it's it prompts you to ask what uh, device you want to use for running things if I turn that off which is good and now when I go over here and run, let's just organize the windows a bit. Okay, I'm going to tell it to run with PyMaker to run main on the device. And we see the result there. Okay, so that's PyMaker just for a simple project. Some of the other things you can do with uh, PyMaker and uh, again, this is my Explorer view here, and down here this is the the Pi Maker project view over my Visual Studio Code uh, folder. Uh, so we saw that before to create a terminal. So it gives you the REPL terminal. This uploads all the files here uh, to your microcontroller uh, device. This does the same thing; pulls all the files that are on the device down to your Visual Studio uh, project. Uh, this one's interesting. This will open the, uh, you get a view of the files on the device. So it's really showing you two folders once, the actual Visual Studio code uh, folder and the files in that, and then another workspace which shows you uh, what's happening out on the on the microcontroller device so I can see the files that are out there which are the same because I uploaded them uh, I actually don't use that view much and most of the time I remove it from the workspace uh, other things you can do is disconnect from the device reconnect to the device there's some more options out here so doing things like a soft uh, reset a safe boot on the device, sometimes useful if you've got something that goes into a loop straight away. Uh, hard reset on the device, so it basically reboots it.
uh, open terminal history so you can see all the things that I've done with my REPL terminal sometimes useful uh, if you want to look back at uh, things that were were run race device all sorts of things so really a lot of things that the pi maker uh, extension does for you can be a bit finicky so i've sort of shown you everything working but uh, you can sort of sometimes hold your mouth in the wrong position and it uh, stops working okay now we've got pi maker all running uh first part of this project i just want to get a simple uh relay to turn a telephone line on and off I'm going to use a micro dot web server to be able to do that remotely. So let's have a look at the hardware first. So the hardware for my pot guard is going to start pretty simple. So I'm going to use a, a Raspberry Pi Pico W microcontroller as the thing with the brains, and that's where the micro dot web server is going to run. Uh, I'm going to use a, a simple relay that's got some opto isolation here to be able to take a uh, one of the pinout values on the Pico W and use that to control the relay. Then the last bit here is really just the simple version of a uh, telephone controller, just taking the telephone line, uh, taking it through the relay to open or close the line, depending on what the value of the relay setting is, uh, to turn the, the telephone on and off. And at the simplest level, I, I want to be able to just do some web uh, requests to the micro dot server to say in this case pot for plain old telephone slash on or plain old telephone slash off and this shows you where i put the same circuit on a breadboard so micro dot is a python and micro python uh, framework you can use to make web services servers um uh, this is the github or well, the main GitHub repository for the MicroDot project. It's public domain. Uh, down here is a little bit of information about how to get it running, and this is basically the code I'll be showing off in this video. Uh, there's more documentation out here in this documentation link. A lot of really good documentation on different ways you can use MicroDot. And for this video, I'm just showing you the basic MicroDot where you're running it in synchronous mode uh, but later on I'll be running it asynchronous and more on that in the next videos uh, the thing we need at the moment is under source it has all the different uh, micro dot libraries that we may want to use at the moment I just want to use this micro dot dot pi library so I'm going to uh, pull down the zip file for this uh, repository pull that off and put that in my project uh, but there's you see there's a lot more libraries and helper functions available here you can add to your project as well and again, the documentation has good information about how you use these different uh, functions. So let's go back to my uh, PyMaker project and start adding in MicroDot. And what I want to do for this video is really just get a relay turning on and off uh, based on web commands. So I'm back in my Visual Studio Code project, uh, still running PyMaker here as uh, an add-on. Uh, so I've gone in and I've added some code to the boot in the main Pi uh, routine. So in boot it was empty before and this gets run first when you first start up the microcontroller. I've just added in kind of the standard uh, network uh, code to connect to a local area network and that's what I've done here. So I'm just connecting to my local area network. So the next piece of code I added was in main.py and here I just basically copied that code from the the micro dot github repository on the main main page so I'm importing micro dot and so you can see here's the micro dot library I was just showing so I downloaded the whole repository and pulled the micro dot dot pi across into my project so I'm doing an import of micro dot um, making a new instance of micro dot called app uh, and this uses Flask commands to uh, describe what different uh, routes are, are set up for microdot. So under the backslash route, which is kind of the default route when you go in with a web server, it's just going to return hello world. And then we just do an app run down here in main. So when it sees the simple high level backslash coming in, 
request to the web server, it's going to return hello world. So let's try running that. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to upload all the files, then down in my REPL interface here, I'm just going to do a Control D to do a soft reboot on the microcontroller. So it's connected. It's got this address and it should be running the micro.web server now. So I'll take that address. I'm going to bring up my browser, go over here. And by default, it uses port 5000 uh, instead of 80. Let's try that. And here we see it's returned hello world. And we can stop this running by just by doing a control C. Okay, let's add some relay functionality in here. Uh, so I'm going to make a new file. Let me call it relay.py. And I'm going to put this code in. So I'm going to import from machine so it can understand all the different I.O. pins. I'm going to set up a pin, pin 15, uh, with, or GPIO 15, which is on pin 20. And it's going to be a out outbound pin, so I'll send out output to that. I'm going to call that relay pin. By default, I'm going to set it to a value of zero, so it's going to be turned off. Then I'm going to have two little routines. One routine is called on, where it sets the the pin to value one, which will basically send uh, voltage to it, and off will return it to ground. The other thing we need to do is go back to our main routine, and I'm going to add in some functionality to add some more routes. Uh, to call that routine when it's on and off. So first we'll do a import relay. So I'll add the code to, for the routes for the relay control. So basically I've got a route that slash on and it's going to call relay on and return relay turned on to my web page. Same thing for the off one. If it sees backslash off, it'll turn the relay off and say relay's turned off. That looks good. Let's deploy it. Okay, let's try doing a soft boot. So we're connected on the right address. Let's go over to the browser, test out Hello World. So it returned. Let's try the relay on. I heard it turn on and off. So that all seems good. So we've got a web service for managing the relay at the moment using that micro dot uh, web server. Okay, so that's the first video in this three-part series. I uh, just wanted to work out how to use Microdot using PyMaker. And uh, this will be the first and probably three-part series on uh, my PotGuard. I think in the next uh, video I'll probably get into the asynchronous side of uh, using Microdot. I'm going to need to run multiple things on the uh, microcontroller, so I think I need to do that and also work out how I'm going to pick up the caller ID so I can start filtering numbers. And third one is probably going to be kind of the finishing off the the pot guard, uh, maybe put it in a box, probably write a website for it too because I'll need some way to enter the, the safe numbers that are going to be allowed through the, the guard.